So now I've reached the end of the base on the hummocks and as you see I ran out of the darkest colour and just used a little bit of my stash to make a rather patchy finish with that last colour but that's absolutely fine and you can keep swapping the colours around to you know suit whatever you've got in your stash and you'll see that I've also added some snowflakes. So I've used the same stitching method as I did higher up on the piece and um, under the cloud and used a pale or a bright white thread. You could actually use um, a sparkly thread or a gold thread or any colour you like but just a little bit of sparkle would be really nice and I don't seem to have any in my stash but uh, I hope you do have and you can share it with me online. I've now moved my frame so that you can uh, see and I can make the whole of the unicorn. So I've just loosened my screw slightly so that the frame goes over the work that I've already done. And because I've got the cling film or saran wrap or plastic around the edge, that's protecting the work that we've already done and that's fine. So now I've drawn lines all along the back and the neck and the head of the uh, I'm nearly calling it a zebra, it does look rather like a zebra of the unicorn or pony if you've decided to make a pony. And I'm going to begin with the uh, first colour, which is in a double thread along the back, starting at the highest point in the rump. As you see, I'm working in long and short stitch in the first colour in a double thread. And of course, it could be pale brown or a pale grey or a pale blue or a pink if you um, want to make a very colourful unicorn. And it just depends what needles and threads you have to hand. So the first stitch is the furthest left there. And that's uh, rather the backbone of the shape because that divides an area in half. And in this case, it's his rump. So starting at the top, I've worked long and short. And as I go down the shape, uh, down towards his backside, then I'm coming up a little lower into the shape. So a little further down his leg every time working down across here. Once you've completed stitching to one side, so I stitched down to the right, whilst I've been slightly altering the angle to cover his backside, um, you then just take your thread across the back of the work and come up for the first stitch working towards his back and his withers really, behind his mane. As you can see I've worked uh, across from one side of his rump and then carried the thread and worked the other side all the way to the top of his shoulder where there's a little part of a horse called the withers which is um, right in the middle there. So I ran out of thread, cast off and now I've moved up to his neck. Now you can either start just behind his jawbone or begin with the stitch that's halfway across his neck because if you do that you'll find that you keep the direction of the lines much more easily. So you can see that the lines I've drawn in in pencil quite roughly across his shoulder here are going to be very helpful now when I'm actually working long and short stitch. So those long um, uh, drawings, the lines I've put in, those are actually the longer stitches of the two. And then as you can see, the shorter stitches in between, they're not really half length, they're more three quarter or two thirds of length. As you work the first colour in the long and short soft shading, just be aware of your tension. I'm being pretty slack here and just actually allowing the wool to sit on top of the design. Don't pull it too tight because otherwise when you remove your frame, you'll find that it gathers. And we really want this to sit nicely across the front of the Christmas stocking. <laughs> 